And I'm excited to welcome everybody back to yet another edition of Tell Me Something Good. This is my opportunity to let the people I know and I work with and hang out with to share something good. It's gone great. Thank you for all the feedback. Thank you for all that stuff. And uh, today's guest is nothing short of a mirror image of how I started my career. Serial entrepreneur, early riser, so many great things about Colin Mitchell. And we met right here in social media land on LinkedIn. Welcome to the show, Colin Mitchell. It's your chance to tell us something good. Awesome, Steve. Uh, thanks so much for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. And yeah, we, we met on LinkedIn and I just, I saw your your positivity uh, and your, your high energy. And I was like, I got to, I have to get to know this guy better um, and just love what you and your team are doing. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it's, with, with a lot of bad going on, you might say it's hard to find some good right now, but there is a lot of people, if you stick to the positive people like yourself, it makes it a lot easier to, to stay positive. You know, we've been doing some great things over here, um, it, but it starts with mindset. You know, you gotta take care of yourself on a daily basis to be able to stay positive and be able to, you know, share something good. Um, you know, m my team and, and myself here, we put a program together where we're trying to get as many people back to work as possible um, through a program that we've put some free training together to be able to help sell a product from home that's in extremely high demand. I, I, so one of the things that jumps out at me when, you know, now and when we first met is that you consistently use the word passion. You're passionate about this. You're passionate about that. I found out today you're passionate about your family, which is yeah. awesome. So I think it's a common denominator and energies attract energies. Mm -hmm. So why don't you share a little bit about your early history of your passion for technology and how yeah. that's led you to one or more businesses that are now doing what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll give you the short version of my story, right? So um, I had a tough upbringing as a kid. We were super poor. I mean, dirt poor, government cheese, food stamps, raised by a single mom with, you know, four boys. Um, so, you know, for me, uh, and, and I didn't didn't go to college. I, I barely made it through high school. So, you know, and, and there was a lot of struggles that happened in, in early on for me. So anything you know, outside of that is it, it's easy to stay positive and be grateful and, uh, and, 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 and be, you know, in a good place. So to come from that, you know, everything is gravy really. Um, but you know, I started my first sales job, commission only sales in the aftermarket supplies. And, you know, I just had hustle, you know, uh, somebody told me early on outwork your competition and you'll do well. So I was the first one in the last one to leave. And I came in on Saturdays to get my list ready for Monday. Um, and that's where it all started. And I worked my way up very quickly there and left and got a VP of sales position in, in, in the same industry. And then at one point, uh, my wife and I looked at each other. This was before we were married. And I said, we said, you know, I think we could do this on our own. So we did. We started our first business in our uh, one bedroom apartment. Our office, our living room was our office. Um, and then, we, you know, through some good hiring, we were able to bootstrap that business to about five million in 26 months. Wow. So, you know, uh, and at that point, you must have looked back and go like, holy cow, that was beyond any realm that you could even dream of, which is yeah. so great. But success leaves clues. I'm a big yeah. fan of this. And so we've hit on two words already, passion, hustle. And actually, the third word is outwork, you know, mm -hmm. which is which is crazy. So you alluded to it before your mission right now is to put a lot of these people who've been let go, furloughed. Which, so you have a really high level integrity in your mission. Why don't you share a little bit more detail about how people who are in the sales game and got pushed to the side can get back in it? Yeah, absolutely. So what we did is, you know, I somebody said something on LinkedIn and I said, hey, you know, all these people are going to be laid off. How can we help them? And without re really much thought, I said, hey, we have a program and we can help them. And then, you know, I started to talk to my team. And it's like that program is built for the channel, right? So for partners, for companies that have leadership, that have management, um, that have tools, um, and and this is not that, you know? So I said, I don't care, we've said it. I already said it, we gotta figure out how to do it. So we went to work, we put the education together, and we said, okay, the education's great, looks great, they're gonna learn a lot, but it's not enough. So what are we gonna do? 
So our product is at a high demand and it pays uh, really high recurring commissions. So I said, okay, the education is great, but we need to do more. And so we said, we're going to help them close their first five deals. And that's where a lot of the magic. Wow. Of the, yeah. That's where a lot of the learning is going to happen because we, we've all take, taken online courses or taken some sort of, you know, course and, and you, you retain a certain percentage of it. But when you do something together and it's real, that's where a lot of the learning happens. So we're going to help them close their first five deals. We're going to give them all the tools and resources that they need. Uh, and then I said, that's still not enough. These people need to get paid now, not in 30 days, not in 45 days, not in 60 days. So we said, hey, if they sell a deal this week, we're paying them next week and we're running weekly commissions. Wow. I mean, you know, if I look back over my 40 years in sales, you removed all of the obstacles that a lot of companies have today. I mean, even internally, they make it hard for salespeople to get paid, which to me is the most ass backwards mentality ever. Wouldn't you want to feed the animals so that they go out and get more? Number yeah. one. Number two, which I really love is that you can't learn how to ride a bicycle sitting in the garage. You got to jump on it and go. And right. if you have somebody providing the training wheels to get them out and do that, so I, I love that. Could you be a little bit more specific about what they're selling? So yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So they're selling unified communications or voice over IP. So we we are a voice over IP provider. So we sell cloud based business phone systems, which is at a really high demand right now. And there's tons of opportunity. Um, and we just want to get this in the hands of as many people as possible that are at home now, you know, tapping into their retirement, you know, no longer receiving commission checks and, and wondering what they're going to do next. And this is a great long term solution. And it's also a great solution for somebody who maybe just needs to make some money until they find, you know, what their next gig is going to be. So it's really funny because what jumps into my head is that even if somebody does has a, have a full time gig, this is still some something that. You know, in the old days, I called it a side hustle. And if I knew that somebody was doing that, I'd shut them down. Now, if you don't have two or three side hustles, you're lazy. So this is clearly something that anybody could jump into and sort of monetize the people that they're, they know and are around. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So we teach them how to leverage and tap into their existing network and relationships, right? That's obviously the the easy first go to, and it could it could easily be a side hustle for for some people. Um, but you could also also easily make six figures doing this full time, going well, all in. That's how side hustles become main hustles, is when they start working. That's where you spend your time. So sounds really exciting. Um, talk to me about some early successes because I know you've sort of been on this roadmap. You know, you've got a bunch of people, but I think your goal, if I remember from my podcast with you when I yeah. did it, was you want to do a thousand salespeople? Is that correct? So uh, it's actually a little more. So we want a thousand oh. rocks. We want a thousand rock stars. So what I mean by that is, you know, we know that probably about twenty percent of the people are going to be super successful. Um, so with we want to we want a thousand successful people in five years or less. Um, so, you know, basically we want those thousand people to be able to fully live a hundred percent off the income that they're generating through our program, pay their rent, pay their mortgage, pay their bills. Wow. Love it. Love it. I mean, so clearly, you know, as a young guy, you have passion, you have work ethic. One of the other things that jumps out at me is you have vision. Um, wh where did this come from? What was the aha moment for you that you just said? I know how to do this and I'm going to do it because I write about it in my book. Giving first are always the keys to getting more in return. So I'm, I'm curious what your aha moment was. Yeah. I mean, my aha moment was, so we've had a successful channel program for a while and that's been, you know, we've been doing well in that space. Um, but it really came more for a, from a place of we just want to help those that have been affected by the current situation. We can give them the free training, give them all the help that they need to get back up on their feet and, and be able to make a living for their family. Um, so when somebody threw that out, hey, there's lots of sales professionals um, you know, that are going to be laid off. How can we help? We really got to work and it's like, let's think of every possible roadblock that's not going to make them successful and how are we going to overcome that? I love it. And, and clearly the talent pool is there right now because there are some good people who were with good organizations that got dealt a bad hand. 
And so, you know, opportunity comes out of crisis. So I, I love that. Let's kind of flip the gears and talk about you personally. You live on the West Coast, so you're privy to all of that mm. sun and, and fun. You said yeah. you're an early riser. Um, yeah. You meditate. And I want you, um, if you can, to speak a little bit about mindfulness in the time of crisis and in the time of, you know, stability. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mindfulness is a, is a practice, right? So it's something that you have to constantly do. Um, you never arrive and, and graduate to where you're some spiritual guru that, you know, doesn't have to put in the work anymore. It's a lot of hard work. Um, and, and consistency is what really helps, you know. So I have a morning practice. I've been meditating for about, I think, 11 years now. Um, before it was super cool. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, there's some apps that I use and I use and, and, and it's kind of evolved. You know, when I first got started, I thought, you know, I needed to sit with a group or I needed to sit for 30 minutes or longer. Um, and it's kind of changed now as a busy entrepreneur and father. It's like if I can. And I also found it more sustainable. If I can do 10 minutes in the morning and then five minutes, three or four times throughout the day, that's much more sustainable because if you meditate and get all spiritual in the morning, you know, as the day starts to go and challenges arise, uh, that's not <laughs> as sustainable. So just even a two or three minute reset um, in, 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 a, in a period throughout the day multiple times has really worked well for me. So, so I'm curious, you, you mentioned that you do it throughout the day. Um, mm -hmm. Is this something that you're going to put into your training? Because I think salespeople are probably the worst at living that roller coaster because one inbound call is great, then the next one sucks and constantly live in this outcome-driven emotion. Um, I love the fact that you do it all day. That has to prepare you to be you know, successful in a world of doubt is that something that's going to wind up in the in the training? Yeah, I think it's it's possible for those that are you know open to that. I think that um, it. you know it's it's something that we could offer, and and uh, I, I would be open to doing that. You know, it's it really does help in, in many any many levels, right? Because um, you can't be more present, more in the moment, and just kind of roll with the punches is really what it allows you to do to just really excel and perform better, in both personally and professionally. So uh, staying on you personally, I found out before that you're the father of three young yeah. children. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. um, clearly you need to give your wife a gigantic medal. Right? You know? yeah. Um, yeah. How, how does mindfulness play into parenting for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I definitely there's definitely moments where the, the mindfulness doesn't, is it, it didn't work as well as I hoped for. <laughs> uh, um, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I have a five-year-old son, a four-year-old daughter, and then a 20-month daughter. Um, so yeah, they know how to push the buttons, you know. And uh, but you know, it's really funny because we've I've I've taught them some things too. So sometimes they sit with me and we'll do a meditation. Um, sometimes you know they get really into it. Sometimes they don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, but then what's really funny is there was a moment a few weeks ago where. Um, you know, my daughter, my 20 month old daughter was hitting my four year old daughter on the head with something and it really hurt her. And uh, so I tried Ooh. to kind of firmly tell her, you know, no, that's not OK. Uh, and it kind of startled her. So she started crying and then I felt really bad. Um, but my four year old is, says, Daddy, it's OK. Just take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> the student, I love it. I, I, I love that. So. Yeah. Um, it's a pleasure spending time with you and going through all this stuff. One of the last things I want to talk about, um, and I find this to be true in a lot of the most successful people and entrepreneurs that I know, is that they have a sports background. Their, their athletic background um, teaches them a lot. So I know that you're a swimmer. I'm mm -hmm. curious to know what swimming has taught you that you've transferred into your entrepreneurial and business life. Yeah, so swimming is a fairly newer newer activity for me. I played sports as a kid, baseball, basketball, football, um, and then I, um, as I got a little bit older, I just got into really into running. That's how my wife and I met. We met in a running group. We've ran marathons together, um, wow. and 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 she'd been swimming for quite some time and kept 
asking me and, and poking to, to for me to try it. And I said, no, it's not my thing. Um, and then I really fell in love with it. And just I just embraced the challenge. I just love trying something new, sucking at it and then getting better at it. Um, and so that's what, you know, swimming has, you know, is more recent activity. So, you know, a, a year ago, I was a horrible swimmer. Um, frankly, I think the, the swim coach was probably laughing, thinking this guy's never going to last. Um, and that just determination to prove her wrong and work my way up into the fast lane um, was, was just really kind of what I thrive on. You know, it's so funny that, that you say that because a lot of the coaching that I do, people beat themselves up for what they're not good at. And I said, listen, at one point, everybody sucked at what they're good at now. I mean, they yeah. didn't just land on the planet and go, hey, I'm an Olympic swimmer. You know, they sucked yeah. at it until they got better. Yeah. And so the, the, there is a progression there. So in our final moments, uh, you, you've offered so much good stuff. You smile. You have great energy and great presence. It's no surprise that you're successful. And you shared a bunch with us. Is there one major takeaway that the sales universe can say that guy said something good what what would that be ooh um yeah one thing i mean just i think that um Did I you know stump whatever Colin yeah, Mitchell? yeah Did I you know, I just, Colin well, Mitchell? I, you might have you might have you know i think just one thing if i had to pick there's so many things so what one thing would i pick right so um i think the one thing is for the sales universe whatever you're doing right now, whatever your situation is, just double down your effort, double down on your content, double down on your LinkedIn activity. You know, it's so easy to give up when it's tough. Um, I embrace the suck, you know, I've sucked at a lot of things and I love sucking and getting better at it, you know, so whatever you're not good at, just dive in and get better at it. See, that was not a stump at all. You nailed it. That is exactly right. It's all about doing more, feeling more, just you know, incredible. So I know I'm excited to know you. I thank LinkedIn for that. I'm excited to be part of your growth and anything that Mark and I can do. Um, your um, My episode on, uh, on your show was fantastic. So in the final second here, tell people where they can find you and watch you because your show is great. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I host a show called Monster Chats. You can find it on YouTube, all the uh, podcast channels. You can also go on our website, monstervoip.com. Uh, best place to connect with me is on LinkedIn. I'm very active on that platform. Um, and it's just, you know, go to LinkedIn and find me, Colin Mitchell, C-O-L-L-I-N, Mitchell. You are a dude, my friend. I'm so glad you're in my life on the left coast. Yeah. You guys stay safe. And that was definitely something good. All right. Thank you. You got it, brother.